Hi everyone, it's Michael. So I have another very cool problem for you all today. This is yet another one from the Christmas Special Mock Geometry Olympiad. So in my last video, I did number six on the contest from last year. Uh, so that was the hardest problem of the second day. And now I'm gonna do number three on that contest, which is the hardest problem on the first day. So if you'd like to try to solve it, feel free to pause the video. All right, so I'm gonna go over the solution. So we have a triangle ABC with ortho center H. Uh, B prime is the reflection of B over AC. And similarly, C prime is a reflection of C over side AB. And we let B prime C prime meet BC at a point T. And the tangents to the circumcircle of ABC at B and C uh, intersect at point X. And we want to show that XH is perpendicular to AT. So this is a very similar configuration to a previous video I did. So that's video 89 um, from the Elmo math contest. So that had almost the same configuration, except it didn't have the point T. Uh, so I'm gonna start out just observing a few of the things that I observed in that video. So just kind of copying what I did. Um, so if C prime is the reflection of C over AB, uh, that means that the triangle ABC prime is congruent to triangle ABC. And the same is true with triangle ACB prime. So that's congruent to triangle ACB. So I'm going to write this out and draw on those segments. Uh, so we have those three triangles are equal, ABC, ABC prime, and a ACB prime. All right. And in particular, that means that CB prime is equal to BC which is equal to CB prime. So I'm gonna write that out. Now, another thing I noticed in that video was uh, we have XB is equal to XC because they're tangents uh, to the circle from the same point. And so if you look at the triangles XBC prime and XCB prime, uh, two of the three sides we now know are the same. Um, so I'm gonna write out XB is equal to XC. And it's not hard to show using an angle chase that the angle XBC prime is equal to the angle XCB prime. And so those two triangles are congruent. So I noticed this in the last video um, that I did on the Elmo math contest. So that's number 89. And I'm just gonna quickly write out the proof. Um, so we have angle C prime BX, uh, that's 180 or 360 minus twice angle B, because both of these angles are equal to angle B. And then, um, and then you also have to subtract angle XBC. And then angle XBC is equal to angle A because XB is tangent to the circle. So this is 360 minus twice angle B and then minus another angle A. And 360, it, you, we can rewrite this as two times angle A plus angle B plus angle C since they add up to 180. And then if we simplify that, uh, we get twice angle C plus angle B prime, um, or I'm sorry, twice angle C plus angle A, and that's the same as angle B prime CX. So I did that in the prior video. And so basically by side angle side, we know that triangle C prime BX and B prime CX are congruent. Okay, um, so written another way, XBC prime is congruent to XCB prime. And so that means XC prime has to equal XB prime. So triangle X, C prime, B prime is isosceles. So all this I noticed from that last problem, and I'm gonna eventually erase this to make more room for uh, the rest of my proof. All right, so how do we get started from here? Um, so another fairly obvious thing is that since C prime is the reflection of C over AB, uh, it's fairly clear that C, H, D, C prime have to to be collinear. Um, so I'm going to write this out. Um, first, I'm going to draw on those two segments. Um, but since basically, since CH is perpendicular to AB and CC prime is also perpendicular to AB, all four of those points have to be collinear. And the same with BHE and B prime. So I'm going to draw that in. All right. Uh, so we want to show that AT is perpendicular to XH. Now I'm gonna start by drawing in the midpoints of BC and B prime C prime. 
and you'll see later why these come in handy, but I'm going to call them F and G. And since we know these two triangles are both isosceles, XBC and XB prime C prime, uh, that means XF is perpendicular uh, to BC and XG is perpendicular to B prime C prime. So we actually have a cyclic quadrilateral through uh, T, G, F, and X because we have two right angles, right? So since angle XFT is 90 and angle XGT is 90, uh, XFGT is cyclic. So I'm not going to draw in that circle yet, but just keep that in mind. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to construct what's called the Humpty point. So I've brought this up on my channel a few times. Um, I'm going to drop the perpendicular from H to, to AF. All right. And I'm going to call it K. So K is the foot of the perpendicular from H to AF. And I'm going to let H, the line HK meet the line BC at point L. So we want to show uh, XH is perpendicular to AT. I'm actually going to show more than that. I am going to show that the whole quadrilateral XHKF is similar to AKLT and that one of those quadrilaterals um, Basically, a spiral similarity about K takes one quadrilateral to the other, and that spiral similarity has a rotation angle of 90 degrees. So that's an even stronger statement than just showing that AT is perpendicular to XH. So my motivation for that, it's not totally clear. Uh, it would take me a little while to explain what made me think of that. So I'm not going to go into all the details, but... Um, this is really the key idea constructing this point called the Humpty point. And I've proven previously on my channel that BHKC is cyclic. Uh, so that's video, I think, five on the HM theorem. Yes, so video five. So BHKC is cyclic. So watch that video if you haven't seen this before. But this, this fact is used all the time. So I'm going to draw that circle through BHK and C. All right. And then there's another um, cyclic pentagon that's not hard to see. So angle ADH, AKH, and AEH, they're all 90 degrees. And so there has to be a um, circle through all five of those points. So I'm just going to write that out. So since angle HKA is equal to angle HEA is equal to angle HDA, uh, HKEAD has to be cyclic. So there's that circle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the power ratio lemma. So I've used this more and more often in a few of my videos recently. And I'm going to use it to show that B prime, C prime, H, and K are cyclic. So I think this is really the key step of the proof uh, after you construct that Humpty point. Um, so here's what the power ratio lemma says. So if you look at these two circles, uh, HKEAD and BHKC, uh, their radical axis is HK. So what the power ratio lemma says, if I can take the ratio of the powers of C with respect to these two circles, and it's equal to the ratio of the power of B with respect to these two circles through H and K, then it turns out there's a circle passing through C prime B prime H and K. Uh, that's the power ratio lemma. So I'm going to put a link to it in the description of my video, but this is really the key to the proof in my opinion. So I'm going to calculate the ratios of those powers. So I'm going to write out the calculation. So what's the ratio of the power of C prime with respect to the circle through AH and K? divided by the power of C prime with respect to the circle through B, H, K, and C. Well, the top, the numerator, uh, it's equal to C, D times C, H by power of a point. And the denominator, it's C, H times C, C prime also by power of a point. So the C, H is cancel and you get C prime B, uh, this should be C prime B over C prime C and that's equal to a half because C prime is defined to be the reflection of C over AB. 
but you'd get the same exact thing if you chose point B prime. So if you chose point B prime, the same ratio of the powers of B prime with respect to those two circles would also have to be a half. And if those two ratios are equal, then the power ratio lemma says that B prime, C prime, H, and K are cyclic. Uh, so this is an incredibly useful theorem that I've started to recognize lately and do in more of my videos. So B prime H, B prime K H C prime is cyclic. So all three of these circles, uh, B prime K H C prime and these two other circles, all share uh, H K as a radical axis when these powers, when these ratios of powers are equal. All right. So where do we go from here? Uh, I'm going to show that KBC and KC prime B prime are similar. Um, and that's just a standard angle chase, um, which follows from the fact that this um, quadrilateral is cyclic. So I'm going to write it out here. Uh, so we have angle KBC is equal to angle KHC, uh, which is equal to angle KB prime C prime. That's where we use the fact that uh, B prime KHC prime is cyclic because uh, the angle KHC, that's the exterior of the opposite angle of uh, KB prime C prime. So those have to be equal and we can do the same thing um, on the other side. Sorry, this got, got cut off a little bit. But basically these two angle equalities mean that triangle KBC is similar to triangle KB prime C prime. Uh, so I forgot to write out that they're similar, but I'm going to write it in later. Um, now, if they're similar triangles, then since G is the midpoint of one of them, and uh, or the midpoint of side B prime C prime in one of them, and F is the midpoint of side BC in the other similar triangle, then F and G are basically corresponding points in those two similar triangles. And so that means that angle K g b prime has to equal angle k f b because those are basically corresponding parts of those two similar triangles since f and g are midpoints of corresponding sides and so if angle k g uh, b prime is equal to angle k f b um, if you look at the quadrilateral um, t g k f that means that TGKF has to be cyclic because one of the angles, which is KFT, uh, by this is equal to the exterior of the opposite angle, which is KGB prime. So, so we know that TGKF is cyclic, but we said earlier that X also lies on, um, we also said that XFGT is cyclic. So now we know that all five of those points are cyclic. All right, so we can draw that circle. So I'm gonna erase some of the stuff that I mentioned in the beginning um, that I had discovered from the Elmo math contest, um, just to make some more room um, for the rest of the proof. And I'm gonna hide this circle uh, through HKEAD. All right, so I'm just gonna make some room here. And yeah, I forgot to mention earlier, but I just wrote it in now that triangle KBC is similar to triangle KB prime C prime. And so that's how we got this angle equality, which proves that these five points all lie in a circle, uh, X, F, G, K, T. All right. Uh, so what is the next step here? Um, so I'm going to show, like I said, I wanted to show that K, F, X, H is similar to KLTA. And so that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Um, so first I'm going to note something. Um, first I'm going to show that triangle uh, LKF is similar to triangle TKX. All right. So first of all, they're both right triangles because angle TKX is the same as angle TFX, which is 90 degrees and LKF is 90 degrees by construction. So we know those are both right triangles. And also since angle KFT, uh, that's the same as angle KFL um, of course, but angle KFT is equal to angle KXT, 
uh, in this circle. And so that means that triangles KFL and KXT have to be similar uh, since two of the three angles are the same. So basically that means there's a spiral similarity that takes triangle KFL to triangle KXT. And if that's true, um, I'm gonna call that spiral similarity phi. Um, then phi also has to take triangle KFX to triangle KLT. Um, that's the property of spiral similarities. Um, so if you haven't seen this before, you can check out my video on spiral similarities. But if KFL is similar to KXT, then that means that KFX has to be similar to KLT um, by that same spiral similarity. Okay, um, so that is the first piece of what I wanted to prove. Uh, that's one step towards proving that KFXH is similar to KLTA. Uh, and then the next step, I'm gonna show that the triangles KFH and KLA are similar. Um, using that same spiral similarity. So this is not as hard to prove. Um, so first, uh, it's not hard to notice that H is actually the orthocenter of triangle ALF, okay? So, and that's easy to see because we know AH is perpendicular to LF and LH is perpendicular to AF by construction. And so H lies on two of the three altitudes in triangle ALF. And so H is the orthocenter of triangle ALF. And from there, it's not hard to see uh, that triangles FKH and LKA are similar. Um, so I'm going to let you work that out. It's not a very hard proof, but it follows directly from the fact that H is the orthocenter of ALF, that uh, these two triangles KHF and KAL are similar. And it's by the, that same spiral similarity phi, because if you rotate it KHF by 90 and then scale it, you get KAL. So basically, if phi takes both triangle KHF to triangle KAL, and it also takes triangle KFX to triangle KLT, uh, then that means it takes the whole quadrilateral KFXH to KLTA. Um, so that's not hard to see. I mean, basically you could just combine the points. So if you just look at what it does to each individual point, this says that phi takes um, F to L, X to T, and this says that it takes, um, this says that it takes H to A. Um, and so you could just combine the four points. The whole, that means that this spiral similarity takes KFXH to KLTA. And that, so those two quadrilaterals have to be similar. And that spiral similarity uh, has a rotation angle of 90 degrees. So since XH corresponds to AT in those two quadrilaterals, uh, that means those two have to be perpendicular, uh, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So AT is perpendicular to XH since that spiral similarity has a rotation angle of 90 degrees. So this is a really cool and difficult problem. I like that I use the power ratio lemma, uh, but there are a lot of other really cool solutions on the AOPS forum, so feel free to check those out. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more like this, uh, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone.